What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show on this beautiful Friday uh, that beautiful. we're having today. Uh, on the program, we are going to be discussing, is there such a thing as too much help? I'm Jeremy Miller. I'm Dallas Terrell. And we are the Betterment Bros. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Now, before we get to the serious issue of the day, which is, is there such a thing as too much help? Uh, we've got a lot on this one. We do. We're excited about the email. Uh, but first, Dal, let's do our two-minute takeaways, man. Two-minute takeaway, bro. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so I got two two-minute takeaways. Copy that. First one, super short, super simple, okay. super sweet to the point. Has to do with a little dog, and his name's Rocket. Uh, yesterday, yeah. one of my roommates was like, dude, I want to get a fucking dog yeah. and I can't because I can't bring him to work. And I was like, dude, why would you ever let someone tell you how to live your life? You want a dog? Let's get a dog. This is how you do it. This is what you should do. This is why it'll work. Carried on with the rest of my day. Coach, coach some CrossFit. Yep. Drove home eight o'clock. Brand new puppy in the living room, dude. Damn, dude. My girlfriend was there. My roommates were there. Everyone was making food. We had two dogs running around. It was just like super upbeat, dude. Man. Like, you know the times when you come home and you're like, God, I'm glad to be here. You yeah. Know? Like that was that was the vibe, you know? Oh, so man. So I came home on a Monday, dude, to like a brand new puppy. Yeah. Some fresh food. I think it was like a turkey salami cheddar sandwich. Oh, shit. I was like, damn, bro, I'm ready to get after it. Man, you did well on your Monday. Dude, it was a great Monday. Great Monday. So that was pretty cool. That was my first takeaway where it's just like, you know, unconditional love, little puppy, dude. You can never just... That can never not be a takeaway unless sure. you're you and yeah. you don't like dogs that much. They've been growing on me, though. They have been. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of dogs. That did not <laughs> no. sound right. I've been... Uh... <laughs> They're not cutting this, dude. What you, What have you been doing to these dogs? <laughs> I, I meant like, uh, like uh, you know, like people are like, oh, I don't do rap, mm -hmm. right? I, I meant to say like, you know, because I used to be the guy that's like, I don't do dogs. Yeah. Right? Just girls. Uh, this isn't helping, <laughs> you know, but... What I meant to say, Dallas... Dogs are starting to become your thing a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm getting into it, you know? I love um, that. I used, to, I used to not have a lot of patience for, like, puppies and stuff. I know how it sounds, guys. I know what y'all thinking. Puppy I, hater. And yeah, yeah, you know, like, you're soulless and you have no heart. It, listen, they're growing on me, okay? Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a cat guy, you know? I, I love kittens. Mm -hmm. Right, I love kittens, man. I wish you said I do kittens. <laughs> I, I do kittens. I fucking man. do kittens. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but like, uh, but they're growing on me. They're growing on. All me. right, like I saw your snap, uh, or no, your Instagram of Today. Uh, Rocket. Little and I was Rocket. Like, oh yeah, that, that looks like a cool little dog. He is, dude. He's yeah. a cool little dog. Yeah. You'd like him, dude. We're there. He humps everything. Okay, so that's the first two minute <laughs> takeaway. Oh, um, hope you didn't get too lost or distracted on that. Second one, okay, is that someone that's. Uh, relatively important in my life mm -hmm. told me that i reminded them of david goggins dude fuck fuck right if you're not familiar with david goggins i want you to stop this podcast hit youtube or google or instagram find david goggins and prepare for your life to change yeah listen to all his stuff dude yeah everything and don't listen with any excuses either no no because you won't leave with any... No, you won't. Which is kind of the point, but... Yeah. So anyways, dude, right, once you go to YouTube and you listen to David Goggins, you would see why I would be so ecstatic mm -hmm. to be even compared to him from somebody that I look up to and respect. Wow, dude. You know, so... And the only thing I did was throw up in a workout and then keep going. Damn. You know, That'll I, do it, though. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's like not as cool as like going to Army Ranger School and being a Navy SEAL and yeah, losing ninety seven pounds in three months, right? And, Running hundred mile marathons and shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it was pretty cool, dude. I took the win. I was like, fuck yeah. If I, I think can it, inspire someone like that. Yeah, I think just it's by him, pushing myself. It's that you embody the message of pushing what you think is possible, mm -hmm. and that is a huge compliment, dude. Sick takeaway. I'm still kind of like dissecting that yeah you know, yeah without letting it like go to my head like yeah oh, i'm david goggins like, right i think i only did 60 pull-ups in that workout he set the record for, yeah for like, like five thousand pull-ups in 24 hours yeah five thousand yeah something like that it was above it was more than four thousand i know that yeah. for sure oh, God, what so that was my takeaway dude being compared to david goggins mm -hmm. by someone i look up to mm -hmm. 
and my roommate getting a puppy, dude. Just dude. little things, man. Awesome. Love it. Awesome. What about you, bro? What's uh what's cooking in your week? Yeah, all what's right. What's the takeaways? All right, so my week, let's see, let's see. Um Okay, actually uh I got a I got a good two minute takeaway, man. Um I've been doing something. I ran a little experiment on myself. Uh, I've been doing it now for about 10 days. Oh, shit. I didn't want to share it uh, last week because I kind of wanted to see how, you know, I wanted to see it play out a little further. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am intentionally driving in the slow lane always. Damn. Yeah. You hear those coyotes? Yeah, dude. Wow. Those coyotes, man. You know what makes them sound? You guys can't hear it, but there are coyotes in my Howling. backyard. Uh, you know what makes them stop? Hmm. Shine a flashlight on them. And they'll stop right then. They'll and there. stop. Yeah, you make sound. You try and yell. You try and chase them. Nothing happens. But you shine a light. They get scared. Damn. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool when I figured that out. Yeah, a lot um, easier. Yeah, it's easier. Um. So you've been driving I, in the slow. So lane. So I've been driving in the slow lane on purpose, right? Wow. And on my way home from the gym, right, like the highway, highway one in California where we live, right, Northern California, it is madness right there's always traffic i'm usually driving home around 7 30 in the morning when everyone's trying to get to work they're all rushed everyone's driving like an asshole and you're all amped up and i'm I'm jacked right i'm like i got a chest pump you know i'm all the testosterone pumping and uh and i noticed like uh and even like throughout the day like all day every day like i am an impatient driver i get mad uh at like dumb shit right you like, also don't like to be late i hate being late dude so there's I so much it. more that goes into this yes. experiment than you would think like being rushed and being late are my two biggest pet peeves in life right um and so i've and i noticed like dude like my heart rate would be up like i get so mad and i'd like hang on to this like someone comes into my lane and i'm like furious Right. And then one day I was like, why on earth am I letting this affect me so much? Like, this is fucking ridiculous. Right. And so uh, I just told myself, all right, from now on, you're going to take the back roads home from the gym. Right. And it's actually a really pleasant drive. I bet. Uh, And it, it, it adds like five minutes, right, to the drive, which is why I never do it. But you're also going 35, mm-hmm. right? And it's like really pretty and all this stuff. So I do that on the way home from the gym every day so that I bypass all that like crazy like rush hour. I'm trying to get to work highway traffic. Mm-hmm. And I'm just cruising on the low road, dude, like just chilling, you know? And so I was doing that and it was like I was happier, right? So then I was like, all right, well, what if I just cruise in the slow lane and not care that people are like going faster than me or pulling in front of me or like whatever? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and dude, my road rage has gone down like 80%. Dude. Because you just don't care in the slow lane. Yeah. You right? let go of all the expectations. Yeah. And I get to where I'm going at the exact same time. Yeah. Right? So it like proved that this habit I had of like driving like I'm fucking Jeff Gordon, mm-hmm. right? Like trying to get to work in a race car. Uh, it didn't get me to work any sooner. And all it did was like stress me out. Yeah. And release cortisol into my body, right? <laughs> Which is already like on shaky ground. You it's know? already happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, the last thing you need more of. No, I don't need this, right? And uh so I've been running it for ten days, dude. And I'm I'm like committing to a month? I'm committing to a month. Nice, dude. I'm doing it every day, dude. And uh it's proven pretty successful. Dude, that's sick. Maybe yeah. you could, you know, even though we're kind of against like the programs and the challenges mm-hmm. and the this is and the mm-hmm. that's like people are like, do the cold shower exercise, yeah. you know, or challenge, yeah. you know. But like, that's kind of a good one. Yeah, driving like in the slow lane. Like a month line. of driving in the slow lane. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Don't fucking steal it. Yeah, don't steal before it. Before we make this a real thing. Yeah. But that would be cool. Yeah, dude. And uh, you know what else I was thinking of too? Hmm. Are you done with the takeaway? Yeah, that's it, man. At the uh, Affiliate Cup last weekend, um, we had someone say like, hey, you should do an episode on how to deal with road rage. Oh, yeah. And we like... Yeah, randomly you kind of just did it. Yeah, we should and uh, created a challenge on you. You randomly created a takeaway yeah. and a tangible thing to do That's to true. deal with road rage. That's true. Without even addressing Meaning it. To. Yeah. Meaning to. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll do the road rage episode. Um, but I think for now, like, hey, make this your takeaway, you guys. Like, try driving in the slow lane. Yeah. Uh, do it for a month, and uh, we'll put it on the Instagram. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Um, I just realized my kneecaps are sweating in here. Really? That's oh, how dude. warm it is. Yeah, you guys, like, you don't understand. Like, it was probably, like, 90 today in Santa Cruz, and uh, that means the studio is cooking. 
so we're uh, we're hot. But uh, my kneecaps are sweating. Yeah, the kneecaps are sweating. So let's dive. But it's in. not about us. It's not, dude. It's about you guys. It's about you guys. Which brings us uh, coincidentally to the funny email of the week. Yeah. What did we get, Dal? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, dude. And just to go into that a little bit more. Yeah, let's do it. So last three weeks in a row, me and Jerem were in the studio. We're like ready to rock and rip it. We got our notes. Got our notes. Serious, serious problem. Email. We're ready to just fucking crush it. And our last thought is always like, oh shit, what about the funny problem? Yeah. Right? And then we spend like 30 minutes being like, what happened? That was funny. Yeah. Did we get a funny email? Right. Is there one that we bypassed from last week that was funny? This, right. that, and third. We start texting people. We start doing all this shit to like find one. Yeah. And the last three weeks in a row, everything that happens is we start talking about poop. Yep. Penises. Yep. Farts. Yep. And we're like, God, that shit's still funny. Yeah, it's still funny. And it's still funny. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, that's funny. Like. Should we talk about it? And we're like, no, because like not everyone thinks it's funny. Right. But what is funny <laughs> is that we are still not getting anything from you guys yeah. to prevent us from talking about penises, farts, shits, and poop, and <laughs> yeah. dingleberries, and yeah. all that stuff. Anal. I, I don't know. All yeah. that stuff that we still think is super funny I know. still is. And we're not getting a chance to like expand and, no. and get you guys involved. No, no. And here, here's the thing, guys. All right, is that we love you all, right? You Unconditionally, know, we say like, hey, you know, like hook us up with some reviews and some ratings, right? And we got people leaving reviews. We got people doing ratings. Uh, you know, they're incentivized with free Amazon gear, which, by the way, is still going on. So write reviews and uh, screenshot it to bettermentbros at gmail .com, and you'll be entered in to win. Uh, a Kindle, or no, I'm sorry, an Amazon, Amazon Fire yeah. 7 uh, or the Amazon Echo. Uh, we're trying to give this shit away. But anyway, my point is that uh, we're getting the downloads, right? We're getting the plays. I look at the stats. They're crushing. Uh, but we're getting the serious emails, too. Yeah, we're getting tons of serious emails. We're getting your real problems. <laughs> and for whatever reason, right, in this beautiful, beautiful audience that we're talking to right now, who we love with all our hearts, we're asking for funny shit and nobody is producing. And I know that you guys have funny shit going on in your lives, right? All we want to do is talk about it because it's funny. Yeah. Uh, lighten you know, up the mood. Lighten up the room. Yeah, it's like we try and do the, the reason, you guys, that we decided to do a funny email first is so that we can warm up the room a little bit, warm your ears up a little bit. Uh, you know, before any great workout, you got to stretch, you got to warm up. That's what we're trying to do with the mm -hmm. funny email. All right. We're warming up. You can't go zero to a hundred. No, dude. We're no. trying to coast at like 30 or 40 yeah. and kind of talk about farts or something. Or yeah. Donald Trump. I don't know. Yeah. Something. Something funny, man. Yeah. We'll probably never do politics. Just as nah. a disclaimer. No, nah, we don't do politics, man. It's that, that gets heated and then yeah. people get mad and we're trying to be funny. We're trying to laugh. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's like, you know, uh, we had the bar soap versus loofah. I think that was our first episode. That was a hit. And that was a smash, man. So listen, this is what we're saying, okay? Dallas and I are going to keep keep cruising on the show no matter what happens because we love doing it. Even if we had no listeners, we'd sit in here and try and help people somehow. Yeah, just help each other. Right. Uh, but but at the same time, uh, we'd also like to you know hook up everybody with funny problems yeah. or situations or hell, even a funny story. Hey, you know, uh, like, dude, I got a funny story right now. I'll give you an example, okay? I'm going to be very uh, vulnerable. Nice. Okay? This one time, guys, and this is what happens when you leave it up to us. Here we go. All right? This one fault. time, I was at a haunted house. Great America. Oh, this All right. is amazing. Oh, God. Okay, I'm a Great America with Dallas, everybody we work with. We're having a blast, okay? We're getting scared. They got like six different haunted houses, all right? And then in one of them, apparently, I got so scared that I sharded, okay? and <laughs> Apparently. Uh, apparently. And the kicker here, guys, is that I didn't realize it. Okay, Dallas and I leave Great America. At like which, one in the morning, yeah, two in the morning. We got home at like... Three o'clock? Yeah, I dropped you off at your car or your house at yeah. three in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning, right? And at 3.06, I texted Dallas. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but I, I discovered that I had sharded. You said, bro, dot, 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 at some point tonight, I must have sharded. And I sat in the car and the I whole don't time. know when. And I had no idea, you guys. Now, that is a funny story. Right? It's hilarious. It's hilarious, but but when left to our own devices, this is where we go with it, guys. Yeah. Right? We wanted the Uber stories. We didn't get any Uber stories. That's cool. 
hey, that's fine with us. But what we're saying is, you know, don't feel obligated to send a certain type of anything. All we need is something funny. Yeah. I mean, we got shard stories for days. I got I sharded crumbs, before guys. I went and saw the end game, Avengers end game. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I went in there free balling yeah. with Jim Shorts, no boxers. Yeah, dude. Because I literally pulled into the parking spot and thought I'd let out a quick fart, and that wasn't the case, dude. Yeah, dude. I was wearing gray sweatpants so you could see the shit from the outside. <laughs> right? I had to throw away a $100 pair of sweatpants, which is a whole other story. They're a hundred dollar pair of sweatpants oh, that fuck. were now just streaked brown. <laughs> yeah, they're ruined. Yeah, that's it, man. That shit's hilarious. It's so funny, especially because it was before Endgame, dude. So you know, nerves were at at like all time high. They were all time high, dude. Yeah, dude. What's all-time Thanos high. gonna do, man? I don't know. God, dude, God. what a rough day. I threw my boxers away in the movie theater bathroom. Well, dude. So I think this proves the point that we yeah. need some funny content, you guys. And even if and don't let your narrative get in the way, okay? Mm. Like. If you're like, eh, I don't think this is funny, let send it decide. anyway. Yeah, let us be the judge, all right? Because we think just about everything is funny. Pretty much. So we can't be disappointed. And right now, something that you're unsure about is still going to be better than us getting absolutely nothing. That's so true. So hook it up, man. Hook it up. Email us, DM us on the gram, uh, you know, send us a text, whatever you want to do, you know? Let us know, though. Let, Let us know. know. And also, as like a personal thing, it's like, dude, we're counselors. Like, yeah. We are spending 40 to 50 hours a week talking about some dark stuff, dude. Dark, dude. We're talking about ODs. We're talking about people hating themselves, hating their families, wanting to die, not wanting to live. Like, that is some heavy shit. That it's is heavy. some dark stuff. So also, like, we kind of want it, too. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, like, sometimes I just got to watch Netflix, watch Dave Chappelle, and yeah. just kind of get some you know like something to let us know the world's still a good place yeah, and not everything's yeah. got to be so dark you know yeah. so help us help you you know that's please. a really good point yeah so that's what we had to say on the funny email <laughs> section yeah tonight is uh let's get funny guys yeah, let's get funny we're not yeah. looking for better we're, we're looking <laughs> for perfect we're, we're looking going. for better yeah that's right we're not looking for the, funny we're looking for funny yeah we're looking for something funny that's it that's it Hook it up, guys. Now, that being said, Dal, let's cruise into the serious email serious of email. the week. Now, while you pull it up, I want to just sh- uh, throw some plugs out there. If you're not following us on the gram, make sure you do so. We're at Betterment Bros. If you're not on the email list, go to betterment-bros.com. Sign up for the email. Uh, we've been kind of waiting uh, to get some more people on there until we start blasting, so... Uh, get on there. Let us blast you. We're going to start sending out the the weekly stuff once we get some more people on there. Uh, and then, of course, we're still running the uh, the rating and review contest. We've gotten a lot of killer reviews, guys. They keep us going. So um, if you feel like paying it back to us or you say, hey, like I really like Jeremy and Dallas and what they're doing, what we would appreciate more than anything in this world at this time is just a, a genuine review on iTunes, man. This really helps us out. Uh, not so that we rank or anything like that. We've got some stiff competition, but more so because we like to know that we're doing right by you guys. Okay, yeah, that's why we do this. Um, and if you're not, if we're not, let's right, know. And there's stuff you want to know, like hear more of, or stuff that we talk about, like poop or farts that you're not into. Reviews are a great place for that too. I'm not saying you know it's all got to be fine. I want it to be genuine. Uh, so hook it up, guys. And uh, through the end of September. We're running a contest where we'll send you some free Amazon gear. I've got it in the house. We want to give it to you. Let's hook it up, uh, and we'll hook you up, okay? There we go. Boom. Plugs out of the way. Yes, sir. So, you know who we're talking about for the email. What do we want to name her? Oh, she doesn't want to be anonymous. I don't think so. She didn't specify? No, she told me. She didn't want to be anonymous. No, she said put it out there. Oh, damn. All right. Well, our girl, Mary Kate Sparks, yes. then. Close came... friend of the show and legend. Legend. She's a great gal. She's been on before. She always actually usually comes through with the funny problems. She does. The werewolf vampire thing. That was yep, her. That was her. So you'll hear her name come up a little bit. But We she's... did the radio show. Uh, that was for her, too. Yeah. Then, yeah, we did the radio. Okay, now check this out, dude. I don't know if I've told you this. Uh, I certainly haven't told the audience. So we called the radio station because she won a prize and then they were ghosting her. Mm-hmm. She did not, in fact, win the prize. Oh, shit. That's yeah. a bummer. But we still had her back, and that's what counts. That's what counts, dude. That's what Betterman yeah. Bros are for. That's right. Here to be your friend. That's Here to it. be your buddy out here. Yeah. We're, we're the bros in your corner. Bros in your corner. All, All right. right. So Mary Kate Sparks wrote, subject, hi, <laughs> like 13 eyes. 
I got something I need advice on. Okay, so here's the deal. My friend is struggling pretty bad with her heroin addiction. She's already lost custody of her son and is just not doing very well. She reaches out to me every couple of months asking for help, and I always try to go above and beyond trying to get her into treatment. Then she drops all communication and falls off the face of the earth. She hit me up recently again saying she was ready and I was fully prepared to help pay the cost of her program by taking out another credit card. Then, all of a sudden, she drops her communication again. I guess what I'm asking is if I am trying to do too much by jumping to help her every time when it's the same bullshit. Is there a point where I should just stop trying to help? Question mark. She's my best friend, and we grew up together, and I feel as if I, if I don't do anything... Oh, I'm sorry. I... F- And I feel if I don't do everything I can to get her into treatment, I'm going to get a call that she's dead one day and I'm going to blame myself for it. Oh, God. Every time she hits me up, Mm. and every time she hits me up, it affects my life in the way where I can't sleep and I'm so focused on getting her help that I lose focus on my own life. Mm. Should I just give up? Question mark. Oh, damn. Pretty heavy, dude. Right? At some point, is there too much help? Are you helping too much? Right. And I is helping becoming negative. Right. And I think uh, this is a really good topic because it, uh, you know, super relatable. It's super real. It's real. It's relatable. And, um, you know, like I, I got a, I got a pretty big network of people that aren't in the addiction industry. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so often people come to me and they say, you know, Jeremy, man, like, uh, I need some advice on this or that. Right. And, um, you know, like, uh, the example I'm thinking of is like, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I got a buddy back in Colorado and, uh, his, this is my best friend just in case, you know, you're listening. (laughs) Um, but his best friend, his wife, uh, you know, goes in and out of depression. Right. And he's like, dude, I don't know like how to help. I feel like I'm trying to help too much. At what point do I, you know, so this is a topic guys that we don't want you to limit to addiction. Like if, if you're listening right now, don't tune out just because you're not in the field or like, or a heroin addict or suffering from depression. Yeah. I feel like what we're going to cover really applies to everybody in, uh, in the sense of like, we're all human beings and, you know, want to help other people. Yeah. But at what point is too much help? Or is is helping too much help, right? You know what I'm trying to say, dude. Fuck. (laughs) Um, So what do you got on this one, Dal? I know you took some notes over there. Well, so, I mean, my notes, right? I have some talking points, but I also want to answer her questions that she asked, right? She kind of was like, hey, here's the deal. Here are all my questions. This is what I need advice on. All right, let's ship away. Right. So the first question is, am I trying to do too much by always being there for her to help? Right. Like, so is her efforts too much? Is her being there all the time? Every call, every time this chick resurfaces, Mary Kate's right there, just like, what do you need? I'm here Mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's her first question is like, you know, you wouldn't think you're helping too much if you got the result you're looking for. If you got what you expected to get, you wouldn't be like, oh my God, I, am I helping too much? Mm-hmm. Right. But like at some point, she's starting to question what she's doing because this girl keeps doing what she's doing. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's, that's kind of like my thing is like, let's answer that for her. Like, no, dude, you're not doing too much. Right. I don't think you're doing, I, I don't think she's like being excessive about it. I don't think her motives are wrong. I think the results just been not the one she wanted. I don't sure. think the outcome has been correct yet. Right. And so her maybe having a high level of responsibility wants to look inward. Like, Mm -hmm. am I being too stern? Am I Mm -hmm. being firm? Am I, you know, being too giving, too caring, too nice, too, you know, rude, whatever. What do you think about that? Well, I think, um, you know, there's so many layers and complexities when you're dealing with, you know, two human beings in a situation, right? And, you know, not to get too cerebral or anything, but for me, me, me helping becomes a problem. Like it, it turns into, you know, like the, the question we posed at the beginning of the the show is, is there such a thing as too much help? Right. Um, and I think for me, like a, something that I've 
had to really work on myself is that I am naturally a caregiver. I'm naturally inclined to, you know, give you the shirt off my back, drain my bank account if it means you get to keep your house, right? Like, yeah. uh, and I rarely think about the consequences it'll have on me because I genuinely just want to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I can be overbearing in how I go about it, right? Absolutely. Um, like best example that I can think of uh, that uh, can apply to pretty much everyone on earth is like, uh, you know, when Mariah, my girlfriend, is going through something, right? I naturally want to solve the problem. Totally. Right? She says, like, you know, like, I I feel this or this happened. And I say, okay, let's sit down with a pad of paper and a pen. Let's and let's, let's troubleshoot and fix it, right? Um, and it took me a lot of years in relationships. It took me a lot of years in a professional counseling role to recognize that if you really want to help somebody, sometimes all that means is holding space for them, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it means like, listen, I'm here with a good set of ears. Just lay it all on top of me and know that I'm going to sit next to you while you do it, right? Uh, just know that while you're going through this really difficult time or this difficult emotion, I'm here to just be with you, right? And it took me a long time to corner that because I'm naturally inclined to try and solve Fix, and sometimes yeah. fixing, it, there's no step. There's no action item. Mm -hmm. There's no to-dos. It's just me being with you, right? So Mary's question uh, of, you know, am I, am I doing too much? Am I trying too hard? To me, it's like, you know, exactly what you said. You, you, she wouldn't be thinking that if she was getting the desired outcome. And if she's not getting the desired outcome, it's not that I don't, it's not that I think, she's trying to help too much it's that i think maybe we should look at the approach totally right like maybe okay if you keep trying uh you know this specific way of helping her and it's not uh, working of getting her into treatment right that kind of seems like what she's been trying to do let yeah. me get you into rehab let she's me get you into rehab. some help yeah get her that, some treatment that's scary shit, dude when you're when you're in the pits of addiction when you're you know even if like you're uh someone that's experiencing depression or anxiety Oftentimes, the last thing you want is someone like, let me help you be happy. Yeah. Let me help you feel at ease, right? Because when you're experiencing that emotion, you feel that it's impossible to get out. And the last thing you want is someone telling you it's easy to get out mm -hmm. because that makes you feel like you're not as able, right? right? If it was easy, I would just be out of it, right? And it's not easy. So if the approach has been, let's get you into treatment and it's not working and she keeps going dark after reaching out. I'm not thinking that she's trying to help too much. I think maybe the angle's off. Absolutely. Right? Let's let's take it from a different angle here. Mm -hmm. um, and when I think about like how I try and help people, I will I will purposefully pause. I will purposefully take long breaks in between sentences, even though I'm a fast talker, even though I'm trying to rattle off like some fire advice. I will purposefully slow myself down and consider who am I talking to? Mm -hmm. Okay, if I was in their shoes, what approach would I value? What approach would turn me off? What approach do I need? Yeah. What do I need, right? And so often it's just, I need a buddy to sit with me while I experience this, right? Like I remember, dude, like, um, uh, like just, to, I don't want to get too crazy on tangents, but like one example was like uh, you and I were driving home from work one day. Right. And I found out that an ex-girlfriend of mine was in some serious trouble. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, dude, it, it was threw you for a loop. It was, it was uh, earth shattering shit, man. Yeah. Like it, it completely broke my heart into 10 million pieces, man. It was, uh, my stomach dropped. I had anxiety, dude. I was like, you know, just so upset and emotional. Right. And I'm driving us home, dude. And you didn't say anything. Right. You let me just fucking throw it all out there, dude. Mm -hmm. And then we just sat in the car. Yeah. And that meant the world because it was like, I don't need someone to give me advice. What can you advise on that? Like, you just got to be like, be present with them and say, and say through body language and through your presence and attentiveness, I'm here with you, dude. I got your back and whatever you need, I'll help you. I'll try and provide as best I can. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's not words. Sometimes it's not action. Sometimes it's just presence. Yeah, man. it's not a lecture. And it goes a long way. So to answer that question, long fucking winded answer. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Classic Jeremy Miller. Yeah, dude. What I'm on with it is let's change the approach. Totally.
Right. I think that's a hundred percent right. You know, like, is she trying to do too much by always being there to help? It's like, no, dude, your motives are fucking gold. They're pure, dude. And I don't think that can ever be wrong. No, no. Wanting to help can never be wrong, but no. there is such thing as moderation. And there, it, there is such thing <laughs> as self care. Yeah. There, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we're about to get into. For you know, sure. Like you said, but yeah, like, no, you're not doing too much. Right. Maybe you're not doing enough. Right. But let's try something different. Exactly. So it's like, you're not wrong, but you're also not right. You right. Know? <laughs> and I think like, well, and I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think it's really important to, to note that like the fact that you're asking us, like, am I trying too hard proves right now that your intentions are pure and good. So good. Yeah. Because it's the people that are that lack self-awareness, right? That feel like, oh, well, it's their problem. They'll figure it out. Or like, yeah. well, there's nothing I can do. Like, you know, that that's more worrisome than like, am I trying too hard, right? And I think there is definitely such a thing as trying too hard, mm -hmm. right? Because people have boundaries and you need to respect that. Sometimes yeah. you have to kind of sit in the bleachers and let them figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, but you're still in the bleachers. Mm -hmm. You're still watching the game, right? You don't leave in the, the, the sixth inning, right? Uh, I'm bad at sports analogies, bro. <laughs> Yo, oh, we're doing it again. I fucking you don't leave this. in the sixth inning of yeah. what sport? Baseball. Boom. Boom. Uh, but you, you, you're, still, you're still in the bleachers, and that's what fucking counts. That's it. You're still there for the game. That's it. That's it. Makes it. me think about right trying too hard. Like yeah, trying to pick up a chick. Right. Is there such thing as trying too hard? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Been there. You try too hard, you sound creepy. Yeah. You you try too hard, you push away. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you can try too hard. You can do too much. You can right. be overbearing. For sure. But all of that is your approach, yes. not your motive. Exactly, dude. Wow. Mm -hmm. Fucking great analogy, man. There we go. Dude. That brought Chick it in. Chick reference. <laughs> yeah, dude. Or dude reference. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, 2019, guys. That's it, dude. Be you. That's it. So the next question, Jerem. Yep. Is there a point where I should stop trying to help? Yeah. Oh, God. Now, this one's thick, bro. This one's a little bit thicker. Yeah, that one's tough. Is there a point? Because then it brings in the situational stuff. Right, exactly. Of, like, the specific situation and mm -hmm. her being on heroin and reaching out, not reaching out, reaching out, not reaching out. And I do want to say, right, like, she's done enough, right? We know her pretty well to file for, like, another credit card for, like, a line of credit to get someone here that's kind of been or not get someone here but get someone into treatment that's mm -hmm. been spotty mm -hmm. that's like pretty you know um honorable for yes. sure yes um pre but pretty noteworthy you know like she's gone to some lengths yes and yeah. has gotten burned right so is there a point where she should stop trying to help given I, this specific situation yeah. i think uh and I think broadly too, like, yeah. uh, you know, for like, for, you know, to bring it back to like the girlfriend or boyfriend example, right? It's like, um, you know, like here, here's a really good example. Mariah, like sometimes I'll be, I'll be spinning out of my office, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mariah comes home from work. She's like, hey, how's it going? You know, comes giving me a hug. And she can sense my energy of like, right. I'm overwhelmed. I'm in the zone, like, uh, and I'm, I'm like kind of on edge. Um, and like being and short or yeah, yeah, yeah. and overwhelm is typically like, I, I rarely get mad, but like I'm, I often get overwhelmed mm -hmm. and she knows right. That right now is not a good time to start like blasting me with some advice. Right. Right. Because she knows it won't land. Mm -hmm. Right. And so is there a point where you don't help where you pull back? Absolutely. Right. And you have to, you have to use. Uh, observance and you have to, and I don't want to sound like so Santa Cruz, right? But like you have to, you have to, in order to really understand, you know, where is the line of should I pull back or should I stop helping? Should I withdraw a little bit? You have to sense the energy, right? Totally. Now with someone on heroin, um, you know, we get pretty relentless because we know that any minute they could die. Everything could be over. Yeah. Right. And, and so time is, a not always huge, there. Huge factor, right? Because most most often, uh, we don't have time. Time's not really on a heroin addict's side. No, like you can't, you know. And so it's like it's tricky with with Katie's situation. Do you pull back? Um, I think that this for me, if I was in her position, and I've had buddies that are that are addicted that I've been trying to get into treatment for ten years. You know, right, I mean? it's a process. It is a process, and. What I use for me is if I see that they are in dire need, 
right? Where like at any second, this is game over. Um, I change my approach, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm trying to talk to the person I want here and it's not, it's not landing, I change my approach. I call mom, I call dad, I call brother, I call sister, I call other friend, you know, um, I think, and, and we're going to touch on this later for Katie, but helping someone is rarely, uh, you know, a game played by one person, mm-hmm. right? When or a t- game played one time. Exactly, right? Yeah. So, like, with Katie's situation, uh, it's time to bring in some backup. It's trying. It's time to, to show up as a team. So my advice uh, is don't stop trying to help, um, but let's change your angle a little bit and let's see what other players are in the game. Because so often uh, the immediate reaction is, no, I'm the only one. Right. But that is very rarely reality. Right. Right. There's a grandma, there's a grandpa, there's an aunt, there's an uncle, there's somebody, there's somebody. Right. And even if they're excommunicated, even if they're disowned by the family and you call them and say, look, I'm friends with the, with your daughter. Right. And I'm trying really hard to get her into rehab. I'm worried she's going to die. Very rarely does an estranged mom, dad, brother, uncle, whatever. Do they say like, well, fuck them. Right. Right. Like that doesn't That's a very happen. rare case. It's rare, dude. So to answer that for Katie, I think the the answer is the same as answer one. Let's change the approach. Change the approach. Bring yeah. other people in. For the broad audience, right? Like if you're worried that you're trying to help too much or you're being overbearing, pull back, sense the energy of the room, play your audience, right? You know if you if you're talking about a loved one or a friend, you know their energy, right? Like there's times where you're pissed, Al. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, like at the CrossFit competition on Saturday, Mm -hmm. there were times I wasn't going to walk up to you and be like, (laughs) dude, how'd it go? Yeah. Right. Because I know you're pissed or Mm -hmm. you're in your fucking zone, dude. Mm -hmm. And I just say, hey, bro, what do you need? Yeah. You need some water. I'm there to give you what, you know. And so uh, my late mentor, Steve Brugge, he hit me with fire because someone I knew uh, lost someone very close to them. Right. And the question and I asked Brugge, like, what do I say, dude? And his his sentence, his answer was. Just ask them, how can I support you? Yeah. Right. And so if you feel like you're being overbearing, if you're helping too much and you're like, ah, should I stop helping? Just throw that sentence out there. How can I support you? Right. And if it's your girlfriend and she's like, I just need to vent, let her fucking vent. I just need some space. I need some space. space. Give the space. Right. How can I support you? We'll give you the answer of whether or not you're helping too much and how to change your approach to make sure that you're helping the right way. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. Boom. Oh, that's my I love answer that. for that. That's one, perfect. Yeah. 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 No, I like I like it. I feel like I'm just doing a QA with you, but about <laughs> know, somebody right? else's life. Yeah, like what do you got on it, bro? Yeah. Uh, no, I like that. No, I think um, you know, is there a point where I should stop trying to help? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Like, and I think that point is based on the outcome. Yeah. You know, I think that point is this point. Right. Right. Like, I think I think you reaching out to ask for help for a situation that isn't working was the point. Yeah. Right. Like you're like, dude, I've tried everything. It's not working. Right. Right. Instead of giving up, you said, let's go forward in a different direction, but I don't know what that is. Or maybe she does and she just needs to hear from somebody else. Sure. It's like, dude, you're, you're totally doing the right thing. Yeah. You're trying to find a different perspective. Right. You're trying to pick other people's brains. For sure. How would you guys get someone in treatment? Mm -hmm. What would you guys do? Right. You get some more feedback, some more data, and then you hit her again. Yeah, exactly. When she resurfaces. And yeah. that's the play. And like yeah. you said with your buddy, it took you 10 years. Yeah. Right. I had a cousin I got into treatment. I had a cousin that I had to hit up grandma and hit up mom and hit up sister and get some money together and pay money my own, pay my own money Yeah. as well to get her in. Right. right? She went to treatment and it didn't work. Right. But I was willing to take that chance yeah. to give her a second shot at life. Yep. Right. And I would make, I would pay that money i would make that same decision 10 times out of 10 and you would still make that decision knowing the outcome knowing the outcome right because it wasn't up to me yeah and i think i think you nailed it man like uh you know sometimes when you hit that point of like oh my god i should stop helping um i think that that can be kind of muddy because it's like okay if i stop helping i'm giving up on them and i'm i'm not uh, you know, that I'm, I'm forsaking my loyalty to them or like, you know, like if, if Mariah is going through something thick, right. And I'm like, I can tell like, okay, dude, like for me right now and to support her right now, I got to let her do her own thing. Mm-hmm. I got to give us some space. I know she'll come to me eventually. That's not me stopping helping. 
Right. Right. I am helping by not doing anything mm -hmm. and letting her kind of work through it. Right. And so I think like, yeah, like hitting us up uh, is taking the it's changing the flow from you to her to you to us. Right. And that in that flow and changing that flow, you've stopped helping in a way because you're like not communicating with her or whatever. But that doesn't mean you've given up. Totally. It just means you're changing the approach. You're trying at a different angle, mm -hmm. right? Which just is helpful. Yeah, totally. More helpful sometimes, as you're kind of saying. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Third question. Should I give up? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a short one. Yeah. I don't think so. No. Yeah, no, I don't think so. No, never give up, never surrender. Yeah, stay hard. Yeah, stay hard. <laughs> David Stay Goggins. hard, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think like where Mary's at, and this is like a really good uh segue i think um mm. cuz when i read the email my first reaction was compassion fatigue right yeah. uh, this is a real real thing you guys where uh you know if you're the guy or a girl uh or person in your circle that people always go to for advice or they unload your pro their problems on you or they're always coming to you with the gossip um and you're compassionate about it. You're saying, oh, let me let me take that on. Let me empathize. Let me give you a piece of myself mm -hmm. that I think could help you in that, right? When you are constantly giving, 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 you can fatigue your own compassion, right? Yeah. Because we are human beings. We run on, you know, emotion as fuel, um, you know, and water and food, uh, of course, and Nicotine oxygen. Sometimes. And, yeah. <laughs> but no, like... Um, compassion fatigue is, is a very real thing. And when you're constantly giving away pieces of yourself, knowing that by doing so, you're going to improve uh, the life of somebody else, eventually you'll run out of gas, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're really, really uh, diligent with your self-care, right? And that is why self-care comes up almost every episode for us. And, you know, in dealing with this situation, the only reason Katie asked us, should I give up? is because she's getting fatigued, right. right? Is because when you are consistently putting yourself out there and it's not creating the result you're going for, you take losses, Absolutely. Right? And those losses in conjunction with those pieces of yourself that you're giving away, that stuff depletes the tank. And unless you're diligent about taking care of you first, right? You'll run out of gas, you'll bottom out in a bad way. And then you feel like giving up. Then you give up not just on your buddy, but on yourself. Yep. Right. And that is such a real thing. And the only cure for it is self care. Right. It's not some cheesy Google buzzword. Right. This is real shit. The reason everyone talks about self care is because it's fucking important. <laughs> right. So that's my answer to that. Don't fucking give up. Right. But put yourself first always. Right. Like if you're losing sleep over this shit, oh man, we got to do something. Totally. That was like the big red flag for me. Losing She's losing sleep. sleep, man. Yeah, it's eating her up. It's eating her up. It's taking time away from her to be her. Yeah. It's taking her, it's taking away from why she wants to help in the first place. Right. It's like, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be, you know, if I had to say anything on that, like, should I give up? Like, absolutely not. Right. I think it goes back to changing the approach. Mm -hmm. And I think it just goes back on doubling down on self-care. Yeah. You know, I'm sure when this first happened, like, you, we know Mary personally, right? Yeah. So my suggestion to her is be like, what did you do to get you to a point where you thought you could actually be of service and help somebody else? Like, mm -hmm. what were those actions? What were those strategies? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. were those things that you did yeah. to build yourself up right. to being the person that reaches out to help other people? Right. Because you and I both know that wasn't you for a long time. Right. But you became that person. How'd yep. you do it? Right. Keep doing that. Exactly. That's, that's where the answers lie. Yes. How do you get back to you? Right. Right. That's like a different spin on what self-care looks like for you. And it kind of prompts you, Mary, to look a little bit further. What are those specific things? Is it the gym? Is it writing? Mindfulness. Is it reading? It's funny because I know her so well. I know yeah. like the actual answers oh, yeah. to this it's question. Mindfulness. Yeah. I'm like, Sparks, you need to stop being so stressed out. Yeah. You need to be there for yourself. You need yep. to hang out with your boyfriend. You need to read books. You need yep. to meditate. You need to go to the gym. Yep. You need to like focus on helping other people. Yeah. Right. You need to get some fucking wins. Yeah. From who you are as a person. Yep. And then keep being you. Yep. And that is, that is really like such a beautiful way to frame self care because like when I think about it, it's like, you know, I know, uh, I know a lot of people like, uh, 
you know, for example, like, uh, like we know a lot of CrossFit coaches, bunch right? of them. And, you know, I know like for you, Dal, like, and Tom, you know, our mm-hmm. friend Tom, uh, you guys are great coaches, right? And I can hear you guys coaching in the gym, driving up the driveway Fuck to yeah. work, right? Yeah. Like, and that is far, you guys. That's We're talking distance. like, like at least 500 yards, right? Like it is far. It's that far I can, distance. Dude. I can hear these guys screaming, right? And it's because they're giving it their all, right? Now, Dal, if you had to do that six times a day, it would be pretty draining. Super draining. Right? I wouldn't be able to hold that tone the whole time. Right. Uh, but if, and and by by pushing so hard, so consistently, you drain your batteries, right? Way faster, yeah. R- way faster. But what gets you through is seeing somebody get in the gym that has never worked out a day in their life. You get them through a workout, and then they're like, dude, thank you so much for helping me. Right? All worth it. You go home, you read you know, 10 pages out of a David Goggins book. You go home, you spend time with your girlfriend cooking and doing the things you love, right? Mm-hmm. And that refuels the tanks. Absolutely. That self-care is returning to a state that got you there in the first place. Em- emphasizing and bringing, you know, throwing gasoline on the flame that is you, right? Uh, and with Katie, it's like, I, I also wonder, like, how is the self-care looking? Because... I feel like when our batteries are low, when we're running out of juice, when we're compassion fatigued, that is when we get sloppy in our help. That is when we get impatient with people that we love, right? Absolutely. Like when I when I worked up at the center and I was counseling all day, um, you know, and I wasn't with my current girlfriend, but like with my friends, with the girl I was seeing at the time, I had very little patience. And when people say, Jeremy, dude, like... Uh, Let's hit the porch, man. I got I got a, a whole bag of problems. We could for, forget about mom for a while. Like this is a whole new sh- set of shit. Mm-hmm. In my head, I'm like, fuck, man. I don't have it in me, but yeah. let's go, right? And I I wasn't delivering 110 percent because I wasn't taking care of me. Absolutely, right. And so for you, Katie, I know that your batteries are probably kind of low right now. It's time to recharge. Yep. You know, and I know like you know doing meditation really helps you. I know reading books. Uh, you know, I know like, um, um, you know, getting into, uh, like going to movies with Michael and yeah, everybody being social. Yeah. Like being ref- around your tribe, refuel the tanks, yeah, man, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause it's also too, like not to just keep fucking flooring this one to the ground, but just the last point I wanted to make is like when I'm at my best, I can take a loss. Oh yeah. Right. Like we counsel people all day, every day. Do all of them stay sober? Absolutely not. Do some die? Totally. But the ones that don't, it makes it all worth it, right? Mm-hmm. So we're like, we are used to taking losses. You mm-hmm. know, we're used to not winning the fight every single time. Mm-hmm. So like, Mary, you're losing this fight. Why is it getting to you so much? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you're you're used to this going this way. Mm-hmm. Why is this one getting you so bad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What's the connection? What right. is the the tie? Mm-hmm. Why is it so big for you? Yeah. Why do you care so much? Right. Right. I don't mean that in a bad way. Those no. are kind of just open ended st- statements for you to answer yourself. Yeah. Those are prompts for yeah, some self reflection. Yeah, yeah. Totally, dude. Yeah. You'll find I, some answers there. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, like, you know, for the general audience that isn't dealing with addiction in any way, but like, you know, like I know, like it's, it's hard, especially with the ones you love the most. Oh, it's hard. It's hard, right? Like, like I know that there are times where, people in my family or like people like my best friends in the world, like come to me with shit and I have less patience for them than I would other people. Right. Because I've been intimately involved for a very long time. Right. And in any relationship, there's a lot of wins. There's a lot of losses. Right. And what shields you from the losses weighing you down and, you know, dragging you to the depths. Right. Is acknowledging the, the W's. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, with you, Mary, but with, you know, with with this loss that you're taking, with like the oh my god, like do I throw in the towel, right? I want you to spend some serious time looking at all the wins that you have produced in other people because that's a long list, mm-hmm. right? And for you at home, if you're thinking about like, damn, dude, like I'm not super patient with my girlfriend or I'm not super patient with my boyfriend, right? It's because generally speaking, you're consumed in the narrative of it never works, right? Or like we have this conversation and nothing changes and blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot to that that we'll talk about in other episodes. But I think at the bottom, at the the bottom of all that, foundationally speaking, it really, really fucking helps 
when you just acknowledge the wins, man. Mm-hmm. Look for the joy. That's why we do two minute takeaways. Two minute takeaways, dude. Right? Is because if Dallas and I didn't fire up every episode with a two minute takeaway, if we didn't have a funny problem, if we don't have like all the self care that we consistently do day in, day out, these losses that we take at work and life and otherwise get to us. They would have sank us by now, you guys. Mm-hmm. We'd be fucking saying hey to Davy Jones, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but we're not. Because we find the joy in everything, right? Well said. And I want Katie to do the same thing. I want you at home to do the same thing. Fucking A. Killer. Yeah. Well done. All right. What else we got? Last question, dude. At what point am I too attached, losing focus on my life, and ultimately... Wait, I wrote that. I I, uh, I fucked that up. We'll cut (laughs) that out. I, like, wrote it for her. Yeah. You know? It was, like, a question that I had, right? So it's another prompt. Another prompt. Yeah. So it's another prompt, right? It says, at what point is she too attached? At what point is she losing focus on her own life and ultimately suffering and losing sleep, which we kind of talked about. We did. I think, um, what was the first part of that again? So the first part of that was basically like, is this my fault? You know, like if she was to die, would it be my fault? You know, she kind of said that in the email where it was like, I'm worried that if she dies, I'll feel like it's my fault because I didn't Uh, do enough to help. Sure. You know, so I think what that makes me think of is like, you know, like my myself, my viewpoint looking outside of the situation is like this chick is choosing to shoot heroin and she dies. How could it ever be your fault? Yeah. Right. Like first and foremost, everyone's going to die. It's unfortunate. It's true. It is. Right. There's like the impermanent nature of people everyone dies dude yeah it's just a thing at some point this chick will die i hope it's not from heroin right and i hope that we as betterment bros i hope you as mary kate sparks we could do enough to help yeah to get her to live longer yeah right i really hope that but i do want to drive home that in no way shape or form could it ever be your fault that someone else died no from this type of situation No. no right um no, that's Did super important. Did you want important. to touch on that? Yeah, I just want to really drive that home um, because in our line of work, um, there have been some losses that I took very personally that I mm-hmm. made my fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like that situation I kind of broke off earlier that I've, I've never really talked about publicly about, you know, my ex-girlfriend that, you know, had some, uh, you know, pretty pretty tough situation and it just broke me dude yeah you were there and you know you you held space and it was awesome Mm -hmm. um but i i made that my fault and i was fucking miserable dude i i mean i questioned who i was my integrity like if i had done this if i had done that like none of this would have happened you Mm -hmm. know and uh and it caused uh just a a a, an indescribable amount of suffering in my life you know and only when I made peace with the fact that people are going to do what they're going to do, right? Like I've given, I don't even know how many people advice or counseling and they haven't listened to a goddamn word I said, or they do the complete opposite of what I advise. Right. Mm-hmm. But I never say like, oh, that's my, f-. I, I try not to say that's my fault. Yeah. Right. Because or I didn't do enough to help and right. make it your problem right. because like that they did what they did as a yeah. human being that thinks right and makes their own decisions. Exactly. And you know, something that my late mentor gave me again, Steve Brugge, one thing that he told me that shook me to the core is in a situation like that, where I was like, dude, it's my fault. I could have done more. You know, I could have done this. I could have done that. And he looked at me dead, dead in the eyes. And he said, I hate to break it to you, but you're not that powerful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that is true. We are not powerful enough to have complete and utter control over another human being because we all have free will. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in no shape, Way, way, shape, or form, do I want Katie to internalize this? If something were to go wrong, uh, you know that you tried, right? And, and that's not, honorable. And it's not your fault that it didn't go the way you wanted it, right? I really don't want her thinking that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really easy to think that it is in our line of work, but it's not our fault. It's not our fault. Right. And also, too, I mean, I know that as a counselor, as an ex heroin addict, as someone that counsels heroin addicts all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. When in, I I think I've even touched on, on on one of our previous episodes when I lost my best friend to heroin addiction. Right. I know it wasn't my fault. I tried to get that guy into treatment plenty of times. I did everything that I could. Yeah. Right. And I was okay with that. Yeah. I knew that if he continued to use heroin, that he will die. Right. And that wasn't, 
right? I wasn't afraid for that to happen. Right. I wanted to work harder so that maybe it didn't have to happen. Right. Right. And I used his death as motivation to help other people yeah. that were willing to fucking listen. Yeah. Right. And that he died and it was his fault. Yeah. And it wasn't mine. Right. And I want to help and I will continue to help. Yep. The people that want to fucking listen. That's right. Right. And that's that's the best advice I could give Mary. Absolutely. It's like what you're doing is right. What she's doing is not. I hope she doesn't have to die. But if she does, use that to feel yourself to help more people. Yep. And at the end of the day, like, you know, I, I don't want to come off to the audience like we're calloused or jaded. Um, but in in reality, uh, we learned long ago or early on in our recovery that it's part of the game we're in mm -hmm. and we choose to be in this game because we feel that we can make a fucking difference. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that for Katie, right, it's important to temper the intention and the expectation, mm -hmm. right? Because your intention is to help the expectation, however, of, you know, getting her into treatment and she lives a full sober life. That's an awesome expectation, right? But I think it's important to, uh, and, and to our listeners too that have no experience with addiction, this applies to everybody, right? But when you hold an expectation uh, and you hold it so firmly, your knuckles turn white and it doesn't happen, that creates suffering, right? When you want something to stay the same, I wish I could just feel like this forever. Uh, I wish it was a sunny day. Right. When it's rainy outside, oh, I would give anything for 80 degrees and sunshine. Right. Wish I could always be happy. Yeah. Like I, I, you, you hold on to this expectation so much and then put all these contingencies on top of it. If I get this expectation, then I will be happy. Right. But what if you never get it? Then are you just going to be unhappy? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think it's so important to recognize, Katie, that you are going above and beyond that you are trying your hardest to help another human being when they need it the most, that you are trying to play your part in this war on addiction that we're all in the fucking trenches of, right? And that is enough. That is. That's enough. And it doesn't need to go 100% right every single time. If you know at the end of the day, you could stamp it and say, I fucking tried, dude. And I'm keep trying. And I'm going to keep trying. That is all that you can do. That's all that you should do. And that is the expectation, right? Mm -hmm. That is the expectation that you should set is that I'm going to try. And as a result of that, I hope it helps. Yeah. Right. I hope that this outcome is the way I want, but don't make it. It's either that it's either she gets into treatment, lives a sober, happy life, or I'm not happy or yeah. I failed or, or I it's my sleep. Fault. Right, or I don't get to sleep. I don't get to do the things that I like to do because this person can't pull their head out of their ass. Right, exactly. exactly. That's giving away your power, Yeah, you know, and right. we all know how that story goes. Yep, it doesn't end well. Yeah, right? self-care. Self-care, so I Take think... Take care of yourself. I think to recap, um, you know, because I think we're running a little long on this oh, one. Oh, we are. Which is good. I mean, it's... It's it, a good topic, dude. Yeah, and it's something that we're both really passionate about. And I, I hope our general audience took something from it, too. Mm -hmm. as far as helping people you love. Um, but I think step one is, uh, you know, consider your approach, right? Yep. If you're not getting the expected uh, result or the favorable result, I wouldn't say give up or stop trying, but consider the source, consider your audience and change your approach, right? Yeah. I think uh, the the next thing and the most important thing is uh, really let go of any need for permanence, right? Like nothing is permanent and wishing it was is the direct cause of suffering. So yeah. we don't want that either. Let go of that expectation. Let go, right? And just remember that when you're when you're giving away pieces of yourself and you're dedicating so much of your time, your heart, your passion to helping other people and you get fatigued, you run out of gas, the one and only way to refuel the tank is taking care of you first. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. That's it, dude. And that's what I'd say, you know, for me to recap, I think those are the, the big bullet points. Those are the big bullet points for yeah. sure. Yeah, I go. mean, I would I would just be agreeing with every single one of those points if I was yeah. to keep talking. Right on. So just if you want to hear those points again, rewind it, listen to them again, and I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way. It's really hot in here. You yeah, know? it's really yeah. hot. And, I, I mean, I think in closing, you know, I would just say, like, Mary-Kate, dude, you're a badass. Yeah. And I think. We love you. We love you, dude. Yeah, and your your efforts don't go unnoticed. No. You know, and the person that you are is is a really good person that wants to help. You're and, a fucking great person, dude. Yeah. And don't think that just because this isn't going the way it quote unquote should, 
that you're not as good a person as you are because you're a fucking legend and everybody loves you, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one thing that Dow said earlier, I want to kind of bring up because I thought it was so fucking fire is that I want to see, we want to see you get back to you, right? Yeah. All those things that got you to a point of being able, willing and excited to help other people. I want to know, have those things fallen out? Are you still doing all those things that created this ability to help in the first place? If not, it's time to get busy. Handle biz. Get back to those Handle things. Handle the business, Mary Cape. Hope that helps, Mayor. Yeah, we hope. Yeah, let us know. I mean, we'll see you tomorrow, so let me know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see you tomorrow at work. Let us know. And uh, also, for the general audience, I really hope you guys take this into your personal relationships when it comes to helping and giving advice. Absolutely. Uh, and if I were to just say one more thing on that, uh, it's to stress the importance of just holding space, man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all it takes is sitting next to someone, put your hand on their back, Saying, hey, how can I support you right now? That's it. Let yeah. them tell you. What they need. And then produce on that. Boom. Boom. We'll have to do an episode on that, too. Fuck. Yeah, we will, dude. I really want to do one on that. Mm. Um, and before we sign off on the show, I also want to plug uh, my friends Joe and Roxanne. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're running a podcast uh, that I'm producing for them called Spiritual AF or whatever. Um, the AF stands for as fuck, in mm. case you don't know that. Uh, <laughs> welcome and they, to 2019. Yeah, welcome to uh, the modern age. Uh, but they, they discuss all things mindful, spiritual, uh, you know, a lot of spirituality, but they're punk rockers. They're, they're very casual. They're um, in recovery, too. They're in recovery. And uh, you guys, this podcast is awesome. Okay, and so are they. And they're fucking badass. Some of the coolest people we know. Absolutely. Fuck, um, man. You know, Joe is, uh, he facilitates mindfulness groups that we've all gone to. They're incredible. Um, so if you haven't looked them up yet, I'll put their uh, link in the show notes and uh, find them at spiritual. AF or whatever, um, they're the shit, you know. Uh, Roxanne's Instagram, spiritual underscore AF. She's got like 105,000 followers, guys. She's a big deal uh, and super sweet. And they're both incredibly on purpose with their podcast. So if, if uh, you're interested, check it out. They're great. Yeah, you should um, just check it out. Even if you're not interested, you'll find out that you now are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll so buy you. Do yourself I know a favor and yeah. listen. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, Take some advice. Yeah. yeah. It's free uh, advice, take it. Yeah, and don't do not do what you do with most of our other prompts and just not do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, actually go do it. Okay, I love guys. how we passively aggressive, like, yeah. attack the right. audience sometimes. Right, well, and I thought, like, you know, if I could get our whole audience outside, right, and follow our, like, five steps to having a difficult conversation, like, hey, guys, um, so Dallas and I are running this podcast, right? And we mm -hmm. keep saying, like, write in with funny problems, but you never do, like... It makes us feel like I feel like yeah, really I, sad I just feel like, yeah, that. you guys don't listen or yeah. care sometimes. And we, we like, want to know you do. Yeah, we want to know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so just let us know, all right? Uh, but that being said, fire us some funny fucking emails. There we right? go. Yeah. Sample. It doesn't have to be anything. Yeah. Like we said, for 10 minutes up top, okay? Um, that being said, we're going to come at you guys next Friday with some fire. Um, yep. And I uh, don't know what it'll be yet. We got a couple good emails in uh, the chamber, so hopefully um, it'll be good. It'll be great. Yeah. It'll be super great. We're running out is. of juice, dude. It's hot as yeah, fuck. Yeah, it's hot, dude. We're sweating. It's 9 at night, and it's yeah. still a little warm here. Yeah, folks. it's hot. So that being said. But we love you. We love you. Write us some funny shit. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah. I'm Jeremy Miller. I'm Dallas Terrell. Take it easy. All right, everybody, here we are on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching self-doubt kick in. That was good. You saw it kick in, dude? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, dude. I was trying to hold it together for you, but... <laughs> it didn't work. When you said today was over, <laughs> yeah, it was a here we are again on the show. You're like, fuck, stupid. Today, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, fuck, Second right. cut Sundays. All right, well, there's the blooper.